we have so much to talk about. Yes, my dog has a man bun, but today, we're talking about the ladies, or anyone who has a vagina. Right off the bat, I'm gonna, <laughs> are you freaking kidding me? How are you gonna burp in my video like that? I'm so excited about this topic. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Let's go ahead and dive right in with the story time of today. That's right, today. I went to go get um, a period product that I have personally never tried and I wanted to be able to show you on camera here today. And I had this like super embarrassing moment that took me back to like eighth grade. I am a 27 year old woman, might I add. I was on the feminine hygiene aisle and I dropped these soft discs that we'll get to in a little bit. And uh, this guy came over, he was kind. I like had some stuff in my hands. I was holding bananas and all this stuff. And he was like, oh, let me grab that for you. And he like looked at it and then like awkwardly handed it to me. <laughs> and I was like, I flushed, like my face turned beet red. And then I was like, we have to talk about this at the start of this video. Why is there shame around periods? I don't have the answer, but I would love to start that discussion right off the bat. Why is there shame around periods? Why is it viewed as disgusting? Something you should try to hide? And just something that shouldn't be discussed in general. I have no idea. Every single woman who has a vagina has a period or has had one at some point in time. I remember so vividly in like middle school and high school and even college stuffing my tampon in my bra, like in between <laughs> in between the T-tos um, to go to the bathroom. I wish I could go back to middle school and high school and be like, I'm gonna use the restroom. Anywho, today we're not hiding anything. We're not afraid of anything and we're gonna talk about our periods and we are gonna be focusing on sustainability today. So I will go from the least sustainable period items to the most sustainable in my personal opinion. On the topic of sustainability, I'm gonna go over five facts that really shocked me in the past and made me want to go in a more sustainable direction with my period. Around 700,000 panty liners, 2.5 million tampons, and 1.4 million sanitary towels are flushed down the toilet every day. Just one pack of sanitary pads contains the same amount of plastic as four carrier bags. Just one conventional sanitary pad takes around 500 years to break down. Traditional period products contain chlorine, which pollute our waterways. Over 20,000 tampons, applicators, and sanitary pads have been collected by MCS leader pickers during a decade of beach cleanups. But on a more positive note, period products have really gone in a great direction and have become significantly more sustainable. So I'm gonna work my way once again from my personal opinion, from the least sustainable to the most sustainable from the research that I've done. And yes, I'm wearing a Sex in the City t-shirt. Let's chit chat about the tampons. <laughs> the first time I used a tampon, I asked my mom, which hole does it go in while she was on the other side of the door, okay? So there's no embarrassing questions here, okay? There are no embarrassing questions. Please feel free to leave any questions you have down below. It can't possibly be worse than that. Let's talk about the old tampon. So in America, predominantly, we use a plastic applicator tampon, okay? That's just really what's pushed, that's what's on the shelves, that's what's in the commercials, that's what's viewed as the comfortable option um, for inserting the tampon, right? Whereas in a lot of European countries, which I think are a little bit of ahead of the US in terms of sustainability, for example, Australia, Germany, I've learned this from a lot of my followers. We do TMI Tuesdays over on my Instagram, by the way. Be sure to check out my Instagram and follow me there. We do TMI Tuesdays every single Tuesday where we chit chat chat about all, all the things, TMI. One of my TMI Tuesdays, we discussed the tampons and a lot of you were saying, oh my gosh, I've never seen a plastic applicator, which blew my mind because I've actually personally uh, very, very rarely see non-applicator tampons, right? When it comes to a plastic applicator, you will simply take your fingers, place them on the grippy part. This is your vagina, you simply wanna push in until you basically your fingers are right on the outside and then I take like, <laughs> pull some acrobats with my fingers and simply push the tampon in and then this obviously goes into your body and this is hanging out on the outside, right? Whereas a more sustainable option would of course be a cardboard applicator tampon. I will say that those are very few and far between at my local grocery stores. I tried to get one today just as like, a visual for you guys, but I literally couldn't find one at my local grocer. I think here in the US at least, it's targeted as a very like old school thing. Like, oh, 
you know, your mom's used cardboard applicators. We use plastic. Like that's very much the vibe that I get. Whereas cardboard applicators, while it's still a one use thing that you're throwing out, it's definitely better, of course, to be throwing out cardboard than plastic. Uh, so an option that's great for less waste, it's also better on your budget. These were significantly less expensive than your typical tampon that has an applicator. These are the only ones at my local grocery, the only ones. This is from a brand called OB and these do not have applicators. So I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like inside. It's a lot less scary than you'd think. It simply comes teeny, teeny, tiny. It has a little bit of like a thin plastic on the outside that you unwrap. The key with these, however, is that you do want to wash your hands before inserting an applicator-less tampon, right? Whereas this, I mean, I'm just being honest, I don't wash my hands every time beforehand because my fingers aren't going into my vagina. Whereas with this, your fingers will have to go in a little bit. So what you simply do with this is kind of release the string and then you want to kind of open it up on the back end. So you kind of create like a little pocket on this back end by expanding it. Then that way you can kind of have a spot to put your finger and then you kind of use your finger itself than as the applicator. I will say that these have a slightly bigger learning curve to them, but if this is what you grow up using only, then this is what you would be used to, right? I personally think that an applicator-less tampon is of course great for the environment, it's great for your bank account, it's great in so many ways, um, but I do think it has a little bit more of a learning curve than an applicator tampon, uh, whether it's cardboard or plastic. It's just not quite as foolproof in terms of getting it into the right spot. Moving on to our soft discs. So this is the only option today out of everything I'll be discussing that I have not personally used. I am not currently on my period, so this is not something that I can test out for you. Let me know, however, if you'd like me to do a video where I test out all different period products for a week of my period or just focus on the discs. I'd be more than happy to do that, but I do want to clarify this is something I have not personally used. I did watch some videos so that I could show you how to insert this. At my local grocery store, they did not have uh, reusable discs, right? Wow, this is a lot larger than I was anticipating. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, wow, this is, so this is my middle finger and my thumb and they don't even fit around this entire thing. Hopefully that'll give you a good idea of the width of this disc. Um, so this is not a reusable disc. They do, however, make reusable discs. Quora makes one, Salt makes one, so there are a lot of really fantastic reusable sustainable options with the disc. The neat thing about discs is that they can be used during sex and they can be used overnight. Whereas with a tampon, it is not recommended that you leave in a tampon overnight if you're gonna be sleeping for more than, I believe, eight hours. When using a disc, once again, from the videos I've seen, you will simply fold it in half. Here's our vagina. We're gonna pop this baby in through here. <laughs> I don't know. It's feeling pretty firm. It's feeling like it would be a challenge. And then once it's in there, it's simply going to collect your period and this little cup situation. I will say that this disc is feeling very large, okay? I This does not excite me. I <laughs> do want to say that this does not excite me. Um, we'll get to a menstrual cup in a moment and I'll do a little size comparison to really show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let me know if you've tried the menstrual disc and if you love it. Uh, we are now gonna move on to period panties. There are so many amazing period panties. I love Thinks period panties and I love salt period panties. So Salt is actually the brand of menstrual cup that I use and they have recently launched period underwear. They're really lovely, really breathable, super comfortable. The pad area is not super thick in the slightest. I used to be very afraid of period panties because I just pictured like just wearing a diaper, almost like wearing a pad. It just wasn't really my thing. But this is shockingly thin while still being very, very absorbent. The absorption is great on these bad boys. So these are the salt ones. I also like the Thinks. I will link some down below that I really like. And of course, reusable reusable panty liners are great as well. I've personally never used them, but it's almost the same concept as a period panty. You'll simply pop them into your regular underwear and then chuck them in the washing machine, just like you would with these. Period panties are super sustainable, great for the environment, super comfortable. Um, obviously not an option for like going swimming, let's say, or things of that nature nature, but really great for just those comfy days at home. 
I love a period panty. Last but certainly not least, I think my personal favorite. Um, we've got the old minstrel cup. This one has some dust on it because I need to I need to wash it. Um, it's been sitting on a shelf, so just ignore the dust, okay? Don't be alarmed. I've grown to love my salt cup. If you have not already seen my video, trying out a menstrual cup for the first time, there was definitely a learning curve. There was a lot of, um, we'll say learning. <laughs> so definitely check that out in the description box down below if you are interested, but this salt cup is fantastic. I think menstrual cups get a tough rap for feeling just very, very scary. It's a newer period product that maybe our moms and grandmas weren't using and didn't introduce us to, but they are truly fantastic. I've had so many people message me incredible stories who deal with PCOS, endometriosis, and just really having much healthier and less like discomfort during their periods when using a menstrual cup. With the old menstrual cup, what I personally like to do is a C fold. This is what the old C fold looks like. It gets it pretty teeny tiny and it's really, really great. Um, there's different folding methods that people use. This is just personally what works best for me. I think personally putting a menstrual cup in for the first time is probably scary, but it's not hard. I think the most challenging part with menstrual cups that I have found personally is taking them out. The part that's got a little bit more of a learning curve to it. I do want to give a friendly educational note that if you have an IUD, like I myself do have, I believe my gynecologist told me that there is a 10% chance, roughly, um, that you can get your IUD like sucked out <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit from uh, the menstrual cup because of that suction. My gynecologist said that I could choose to still use my menstrual cup if I wanted to, but that there was a risk associated with it. I believe she said it was roughly around 10%, so I'm just over here living on the edge. I definitely recommend speaking with your gynecologist if you have an IUD about the menstrual cup and if it is a good fit for you. Now, I do just wanna give a size comparison here between the disc and our our menstrual cup. So as you can see, the circumference of our disc is significantly larger. I'm going to go ahead and place this in here so you can see just how much bigger of a circumference the disc has. This terrifies me. Um, I'd be really curious to hear if you guys have had good experiences with this. This is alarming, but I do like the sex thing. Like that's cool because you cannot have sex with this, or at least I'm certainly not. So... Let me know, let me know. To conclude, this is per usual a safe place where you can ask questions, no matter how embarrassing they might feel, no matter how TMI they might feel, please feel that this is a safe place that you can ask questions. I will try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. I, I really think it's so important. I don't think this topic is discussed enough and I want to be there for you. And I know that others will step in and help answer as well. So if you need a big sisterly advice or even if you're someone older than me and you still have a question like, girl, I'm your friend, let's chit chat. Feel free to leave your questions down below, comments, concerns, compliments, and uh, until next time, I'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed, and follow me on Instagram. Okay, bye.